here, man. Hey. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just here, man. I'm here trying to get some of this royalty right here. This is the superstar oh, right here, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's everybody how doing tonight? Yeah, we, good. we got Mr. Yeah. Miss JSC with sports. Yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. The, matriarch, the matriarch of media. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I'm going to claim that part. I'm going to claim that. Oh, yeah. We're going to make sure that it's out there, too, man. We're going to make sure. Put some respect on the name. What's good, everybody? Well, well, I would like to first thank y'all for coming last minute. I hit y'all up like a few hours ago, and I'm glad y'all got to come. I mean, I love what y'all post on social media. I love how you guys come together on like HBCU topics, school topics. And, you know, we're all JSU alums. We love our school, and we want to see it get better. So I'm going to do a brief, brief introduction. I'm Jordan Jefferson. I'm a JSU grad, 2020. Uh, today we're on Historically Black Sense. I'm a, I'm a grad student at Harvard University. I currently work on the Hill. Uh, for Hakeem Jeffries, and that's a little bit about myself. So we have two special guests. They are very influential on the Twitter, Instagram, all media <laughs> world about sports. So y'all introduce yourselves. I'll let Simone go first. Well, oh, okay. Uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting me. I'm so excited to have the chance to expand my platform. This is my first time on an Instagram Live. I've never done this before. Um, so it's interesting. You know, I had to set up my phone this time and put it all yeah. the right way, put the lighting on there. I was like, okay, this is this is different. Um, but my name is Timona. I'm a class of 2010 graduate of the Jackson State University. Um, I started my podcast, I want to say, um, November 2002, early December is when I decided to start my own podcast. And basically the premise of my podcast is I want to cover um, HBCUs with the emphasis of the SWAC and then not just sports, but HBCU politics, things that are happening in the HBCU realm. And then of course, I'm going to rep my school jackson state um so it's been a roller coaster but for the first nine months i am on a rock and roll pace it's been fast paced i'm loving it um so thank you once again for having me on your show oh yeah yeah thank you for coming appreciate you jordan um uh, that was sure. good this morning my name is ken clark uh, jsu 05 class of 05 um I represent two platforms, though, man. I, I, I represent Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, first and foremost, uh, with the Corey C., myself, Zoe Phillips. Um, what Tiger Talk is, is basically we cover all things Jackson State sports. Uh, primarily, uh, we are uh, partner with the 1400 Club, which is an official affinity group of the university. Uh, I'm actually a co-host. If you, if you guys are not catching any of the interviews right now on YouTube, go to Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. On YouTube, um, all forms of social media, whether it be Facebook, uh, IG, and Twitter. And I also, we also have a uh, second YouTube channel, which is KC1400 Media Group, which is myself, Zoe, uh, Rochelle, uh, Tarante Day, Marcus uh, Williams, and a host of family that join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights on YouTube Live for uh, JSU uh, Sports Chat. Now, that particular platform it's not tied to university, but we show up, we pull up, we talk about all things JSU. Um, and what we try to do is try to take a deep dive into anything that is relative to Jackson State. Uh, like Timon and I, we, we, we take uh, JSU media very serious. We think our story is, uh, we don't play around with the story. Uh, we have sat back for years and we've watched uh, other media outlets just kind of do what they want to do with Jackson State. We call it giving us left hand coverage. So uh, now, we just do checks and balances, and uh, you have some alums that care about uh, the, the the public image of the university. And new media is, is a new wave now, so we just jumped in, and we jumped in, and we're learning on the go. We're learning on the fly. We got two, um, I would say, small yet very impactful. I would say three yeah, small yet very impactful uh, platforms on YouTube, and we're we're making waves. So be on the lookout for us, and uh, we're excited to be here. Thank you for having us, short. Yeah. Well Thank y'all, man. And make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, all the nine, because, you know, these are some great people, and they are awesome on Twitter. So, on Twitter. so I know we got the first, so it's the first week of football this week. I'm excited, finally. I've been itching for it. I've been scratching for it. And it's, like, good that it's back. Um, kind of want to talk about, like, 
like, we did well against South Carolina State. So, like, how did y'all feel about it? I was at the game. Um, I was on the live. I was excited. I was like, man, we, we doing the dang thing. You know, like, you know, we got bad media and press because uh, – uh, Coach Prime left us, and I was telling everybody, I was like, it's go- it doesn't stop. But I would let people talk. Uh, coach TC was my coach at Jackson State when I played. So he's a great coach. He's like a military mind guy. He's right. disciplined, and he, he does does a hell of a job. And I'm I'm proud that my former coach, him and Coach O, Coach O coached me in high school and college as well. So these two great guys to continue the legacy of Jackson State. Like, briefly, like, what is it, like, how did y'all feel about, like, the momentum, the train don't stop, man. Like, how do y'all feel about this? Well, for me, I saw a need there um, because mm-hmm. I saw the type of information that was being disseminated. Um, and when you have a big media behind you, um, certain things can be pushed and no one will question it. So for me, that was basically my premise. Like, I have to speak up. I have to say something. So um, it's interesting that we've been off the ball for the past nine months but yet and still I was able to build my platform during that time basically um, talking about the recruits um, covering the recruiting class going through um, one of the things that I love to do with football is breaking down um, possible matchups and just talking about the players and the coaching staff that uh, coach TC Taylor was able to amass in such a short time um and then if you actually delve deep into it you'll find that there are a lot of players that were actually recruited by coach o and coach tc taylor so it's no surprise that um, he was able to get the number one hbcu um, class and the number two overall in fcs it's no surprise because they were behind the scenes the main ones that were doing the recruiting even under coach prime uh, great points. Um, I'll just to add to that, um, like Timona stated, uh, when our previous coach, Coach Prime, uh, departed, um, it put us in such a kind of a chaotic state, which kind of uh, sparked a, a new, um, like I said, we, on Tiger Talk, we would just do pre-recorded interviews and we would try to, you know, go and get the interviews that we wanted, um, that we figured everyone wanted to hear from or see. But um, the way KC 1400 Media came about was it just started going live. And then my brother Joe, Zoe jumped on and we just, and we just, everyone was in the kind of the same space. And like Timona, we, we uh, being close enough to know a little bit of, of what you, 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 you would say happens at the university, uh, considered somewhat of an insider. Um, I felt like, I felt like I could speak to the, to the base and just say, Hey, we're going to be okay. You know what I mean? We, we're going to be all right. And it led into exactly what Tamona talked about. Uh, we have a coach, man, that is uh, has a has a very quiet confidence about himself. Jordan, you know him uh, better than, than any of us do because you, you played for him as well as Coach O. Because when everyone exited the room, uh, those are the only two coaches that were left in the building. And they did a masterful job putting together a great staff, uh, as Tamona stated, uh, putting together uh, the, the number one uh, recruiting class in HBCU. Uh, we want to say FCS. We just we're gonna wait to see what Campbell does with their recruiting class, but we still li- like our recruiting class as the top dog. But um, uh, we went through a long, 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 long off you know off season where we get through the spring, go into the summer. Uh, everyone's trying to figure out what's going on. We reestablished the media at the university under Austin, Mr. ASVP himself, and. Uh, we didn't miss a beat. We just we just needed a little bit of time for us to get our feet under us and reestablish ourselves. And with the support of Lums and with the support of the administration, uh, Coach Taylor and his staff and, and, and the student athletes were given all the resources and things that they needed to get to the point where week zero, we're going to Atlanta versus, versus South Carolina State to do what we were not able to do in 2021, and that is beat South Carolina State. And uh, we kind of talked about it, joked about it, we had something that we were working with, and we knew that if we went in there and won, won the game, we figured the the the, the uh, super fans is what I call them. Uh, they were going to move the they were going to move the goalposts and, and try to start talking about what the previous team is not, as opposed to what we are. We want to focus on what we are, uh, who our coaches are, who our players are, and just how great of a job they've done. So, yeah, I, I want to say like um, like. Going from prime era, well, I was in Hendricks, and I saw prime, and then seeing Coach TC, 
Um, I would say, like, I saw, like, I was at the Miami game last year. Like, we were up a lot. But those guys were – they were talking too much on the sideline, man. It was, like – it was just very, like, all over the place. And then noticing it from this past weekend, them boys, like – them boys were, like – they have a point to prove. Like, they're disciplined. They were – it was no talk. They were up, we were up 37 points, and they were just like, come on, man, let's go. Let's keep going. It was no joking. It was no trying to be in front of the media. It was just like, let's handle this business and move on. And I was just like, wow, like, Coach TC is really, like, being beyond. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 like, it's, be, it's been – his camaraderie is bigger than just coaching. Like, he's actually developing young men because they're, like, they, they have a point to prove. And it was, like, just great to see that. I was like, wow, like, I wish I had this. And I – I was playing, but hey, you know, I can, I, I can, love, <laughs> but, I, but, but I can love from a distance, you know, like it's like I'm like, I kind of feel like, you know, old head. I'm about four years out the program now, so I can, I can barely run a mile now. So, like, it's just like, hey, like, wow, like, this is great. So, happy to see, like, he, them boys are going to be good for a while. Like, I really feel that. Um, Let me throw one thing. In there. Let me let me throw one thing in there, Jordan. To what to your to your point, um, and Timona, I don't know if you caught the interview. I had a chance to sit down with Jaheem Hazel, uh, number three, starting uh, D, uh, DB for us, and uh, the compliments that he gave. If you guys haven't watched that interview, go to Tiger Talk with the fourteen hundred Club on YouTube. I just have um, he gave two compliments. I just want to mention to your point, and we all know from a football athletic standpoint, the team takes on the personality of the coach. I'll just leave that right there. We, we know TC doesn't say a whole lot. He's more about action. He's more about uh, staying focused. And, um, but Jaheim mentioned, he said, this is one of the first times he's been in a program where you have a coach that has a vision, and everybody from the top all the way down has bought into that one vision. And I thought that was just a, that was the greatest compliment that I could have heard for our coach, and he just gave us some perspective. So just wanted to add that to your point. And because uh, you, I wasn't on the sideline. I know what it was, and I, I didn't really get a chance to see it. I, I may be down there uh, versus the family game, but for you to see that and say it and compare it to what you saw, is uh, you saw exactly what you saw, and it's, it's a real thing, brother. Yeah. And that's a great observation uh, for you to be able to notice that progression. And it speaks volumes about the program. Um, I've been really big on the coaches over the past nine months. I um, would break them down because one of the narratives, of course, was, well, all of your coaches have left the building and how are they going to be able to uh, build this team that is at the same level, level or better than the one that Coach Brian bought in. But being able to see all of these coaches and um, learning that they all, one way or another, um, come from different coaching trees and different branches, and they've all, over the last even couple decades, they've worked together in some form or fashion, or they've crossed paths, and now they are here at Jackson State. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. And then uh, for Coach T.C. Taylor, how surreal is it that, and you're a football player, so you know the feeling of walking um, into that stadium to 40 and 50,000 players, or not players, but fans. But how surreal is it that at one point in time, he was just like you with his helmet on and his pads and he's walking in there um, as a player. And now you're walking in there as a head coach. It, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And it's just like life goes full circle. And, and I, I don't, I don't know his personal goals, but you could tell by the way he, uh, approaches it like this is in a lifelong dream for him. You know, when you know when people have lifelong dreams, they you could tell by the way they grasp their their goals. Like they just take every, they just take it a different type of serious. So you could just feel the energy, and I could just feel the unfinished business. I wanted to switch over to like more of like swag football predictions. Like like I said, we're back in the season, and I wanted to, I'm gonna say like the names of the schools. That are playing in the SWAC, and like, what do y'all think the score is gonna be? So, A and M versus Vanderbilt. Who do y'all think's gonna win that one? <laughs> I mean, according to Coach Connell Maynard, they don't have a chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw. That. He basically I said, just, "Yeah, that was that was brutal, man." But but you know what? He um, as he stated, they want to get in and get out of there uh, healthy. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go forty-two fourteen. I'm not gonna do them too bad. 
Wow. Um, I just, I've, I've never been a fan of those types of matchups. Um, I just, I just don't like them. But um, if I had to, let me see. I mean, the, the money line, they don't even have a line for this game. I was going to look at Vegas. Line. I was going to look at Vegas as well. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how I dictate it. They don't have a spread for uh, Alabama and Alabama. Um, Easy money. Uh, I see somebody so say I'm going to say, say 14 to 35. Oh, that's too Dandy close. Lee. You're giving them too much on that. But it's your score of prediction. Sure. Um, I think Vanderbilt going to bust it. I think they're going to definitely hit 40. What about now, Alabama State Southern is going to be interesting, though. Which, uh, oh, yeah, it will be. Ooh, ooh. Now, that's you my go, type of First, yeah, that's my go. type of matchup. Sub <laughs> Southern, Southern, we got Harold Blood. Uh, I'm going Alabama State over over Southern. What in this game? Yes, I am. I'm gonna go I'm Alabama State. Over Alabama State, absolutely. Wow. Now I know the Southern fans want to. Uh, I, I I I I told Southern one time that I I I want them to lose their spring game. <laughs> I'm not all in on that. Not lose spring games <laughs> no, um, themselves. No, I think I think a D, a D Davis uh, at Alabama State coach um, Coach Eddie Robinson has a, a really good defense. I mean, he did a, some you know some uh, he had a, he had a really decent uh, off season in recruiting. Uh, that team plays tough. We talked about the co the team's playing taking on the personality of the coach. I think um, where where are they playing at? Are they playing in Baton Rouge or are they playing in? I think they're playing in in, in Montgomery, aren't they? They're in Alabama State. Alabama so, State. so I'm t telling you, man, Alabama State, one of the toughest places to play in uh, in, in the SWAC. Uh, great facilities, great field, uh, great announcer. I mean, it's a great atmosphere. First time they played, I want to say two seasons ago, it was a very tight game that Southern yeah. pulled out towards the end, I think. So I'm going to say that D. Davis has a, 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 a he takes a leap from his freshman year to his sophomore year, and um, and that defense is able to hold up Southern's offense. And I'm gonna go with a close one. I'm gonna say 24 20, 24 20, 20, 24 21, 24 21, Alabama State. Okay. Um. So I think that Alabama State, especially, um, they have Colton Adams, um, on the defense. He's and nice. So yeah. I think nice. that. Defensively, um, Alabama State is going to overwhelm Southern, um, and we didn't get to see that much of blood last year. But what we did see, it wasn't anything to brag home about. Maybe he has uh, evolved and elevated. Um, I know that they just lost one of their running backs who was supposed to have a big impact. Um, Carl Ligon will not be uh, playing for Southern. Uh, this particular season and he was one of the players that I thought would have had a really huge impact and been able to take off some of that pressure from the quarterback so I'm going to go with Alabama State and I'm going to say 28-13 uh, Wow mm. Wow Boone mm. Cookman and versus Memphis, what do y'all think that's gonna be? I think that, that ain't gonna be close. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Coach Raymond Wood. Yeah, Coach Woody. I I I know he's gonna be his first uh first coach game, and Memphis is tough, man. That's that one can get ugly. That might be a 65, 60. That might be a sixty three seven, like the one saw in the uh in the uh in put in the chat. So I'm gonna go sixty three seven uh, Memphis. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I mean, the numbers that I'm seeing right now for Memphis, for the type of players that they have, um, Coach Raymond Woody is going to have an uphill battle for him. Um, I will say this, he was one of the best recruiters um, when he was recruiting back in the Power Five. He was one of the top recruiters. Um, mm -hmm. The issue that he's going to have is that he had to start so late with the recruiting. And so um, 
I feel like it's another money game that I don't necessarily like. And I'm going to say 54, 54 to 10. Okay. That's a high scoring yeah. game. Good Lord. I hope it's not. Yeah. This yeah. is tough though. And so, so now we got Valley versus Central State. I think that'd be a good game. Mississippi I don't think Valley. So. I don't think it's going to be close. I think Mississippi Valley is going, going to route them. Uh, I think Mississippi Valley is going to be extremely tough this year. Uh, kid Maldonado, uh, that quarterback, um, Coach uh, Kendrick Wade, did a really good job of recruiting. A Coach, uh, you know, I was going to say Akeem um, McClellan, he, the AD, has done a fantastic job with turning that program around in such a short time. Uh, he's added that flair, you know what I mean, that he's got Valley looking good. Um, the media department is looking well. They dropped a the video today, putting that showing the uniform. So I'm happy for Valley, man. And I think that they're going to um, – I actually think Valley could, has the potential to start 2-0 and because I know they got Delta State at Delta State in game in week, in game week two. But in, this is Chicago Classic, Central State. I think Valley's going to look pretty darn good, man. I'm going to go Valley. I'm going to say Valley 38. Let's go 38-7. 17 Valley. Okay. I like that I prediction. Valley. I like that prediction. Um, the Valley had a tremendous recruiting class. Um, and they also have the potential to possibly upset a couple of blue blood HBCU programs. Um, North Carolina Central is going to be coming off of uh, playing a big power five team coming over there to Itabina. No, they're going to be in. I think they're going to be in Illinois or Indianapolis or something like that. But um, I think that Valley has the potential to knock some folks upside the head. So everybody needs to keep their head on a swivel, Jackson State included, which, you yeah, know, we, go to Italy, we, don't let our, we don't let our guard <laughs> down, but Valley and, and, and Jackson State, they play hard. And, and when we're on Valley's turf, they play even harder. Um, so I I like that score, uh, thirty eight fourteen, and I'm I'm gonna rock with that. Okay, um, Alcorn USM, Alcorn looked pretty decent this year. I tell you who I'm rooting for. Right. I'm <laughs> That's going a no all Alcorn. I don't I didn't like the you know the I know there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of chatter. I don't think they I don't think at Alcorn will win the game. I also know that. USM ain't dropping 70 on Alcorn, like Frank Gore Jr. stated in his uh, video that he put out. Uh, Alcorn is going to be tough. I think anytime you got re arguably the best returning running back in the conference, uh, Jarvion Howard, um, you got Tyler Macon at quarterback, a four star transfer from Missouri, uh, stout defense, uh, stout, uh, they got great wide receivers. Valley has to really. Um, oh, wow. People just, I got a phone call. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can still hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, so I think um, I think the game is going to be much closer than people think. I'm going to give USM the edge because of, yeah, I just think they, you know, they may have a little bit more um, depth than Alcorn. So when you get into that second half, I think the depth is going to show itself. But Alcorn is going to be tough, man. I actually got Alcorn is my sleeper, not my sleeper, but my pick to win the West. Um, so, I, I think um, I'm going to say all corn 35, 20. I mean, uh, USM 35 to 24, 35, 24. I think it's going to be a much closer game than people think. Okay. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I want to say, I'm just going to say that all corn state is going to pull an upset here. I'm okay with that. <laughs> That would be 20, great. I would love that. 23 to 20. Okay. Ooh. A field, almost goal, beat, a field goal to win it. A field goal. A field goal to win it. Break the internet, Alcorn. Please do. <laughs> uh, UA, UAPB versus Tulsa. Yeah, I already know what it is. What is up with all it, these types of games? It's, I'm going to say a whole lot to not enough. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tulsa, uh, Golden Hurricane. Uh, let's see, man, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be brutal, man. Um, UAPB don't have a snowball chance in the middle of any city you want to pick right now because uh, it's hot. 
Uh, but um, ooh, man, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, I, I mean, UAPB may be good if they score. If you're being honest, and I, I, I'm not trying to disrespect the new coach. Uh, we'll give them seven, but I think that's going to be another 60 point uh, showing for a Tulsa, and, and the UAPB may get a score. So let's go 60. Uh, let's do 65 uh, seven. 65 seven. Okay. 66 to seven. I'm sorry. 66 to seven. There we go. Let's make it a. Let's make it make sense. Um. So. I had a chance to actually interview um, head coach Alonzo Hampton. I love his energy um, and just talking to him about his program, I was definitely excited, you know, for him. Um, he's a coach that, that has experienced. He coached at ULM, coached at Florida State. He coached at a couple of power five schools and he has a defensive minded type of team. Um, the fact that he's that they are scheduled to play Tulsa, I don't necessarily like that. Um, it is what it is. Um, so it, it's, it's actually going to be tomorrow. The game's tomorrow at 8 p.m. on ESPN yes. Plus. So I'll be we'll tuning be and rooting that. for them. I'll be rooting for them. Yeah, um, yeah. we're rooting for I them. Just, yeah want them to come out at ex any any hbcu that's playing um a pwi power five fb lower fbs any team that has that core advantage of of depth and um more players i just root that they get out healthy most of all i don't have a score for that particular game um i just want them to get out healthy and and get a good showing okay texas southern versus prairie view Ooh, <laughs> I got Texas Southern. I got Texas Southern, man. I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. No, man. Really? I, I, I do not have Texas Southern winning that game. Wow. I know. Wow. I'm sorry, but I, Prairie View is going to be tough. Um, I am a fan of Caleb Johnson. I'm a fan of Juice Jenkins. I think Trayvon Conley is a uh, – is a solid quarterback, not really on the passing side, but he's a great athlete. He can he can run the ball. So uh, Bubba McDowell always has a good defense. Um, I think he's going to give Andrew Body uh, some some fits and some problems. If you you know if you make Andrew Body have to beat you with his feet, I think you got a good chance. But I think Tex I think Prairie View's defense is going to be um, is going to be formidable enough to, to to edge that. I don't I don't I won't say it's a blowout or anything like that. It's going to be a competitive game. But I see Prairie View winning that game uh, by a touchdown. I'm going to go 35-28, Prairie View. I'm going to go with Texas Southern. Um, I'm real big on offenses. And so for me, uh, the head coach has had three years to develop a team tailored to his quarterback. Good three point. years. There's actually no excuse um, to not have Andrew Body, a solid offensive line, and some solid wide receivers. We did see um, a couple of wide receivers that they recruited this uh, offseason. Um, Quay Davis committed to Texas Southern. I, now, I don't know if he's going to be playing um, this weekend, but I do know that he did. Um, that's a four-star wide receiver um, out of Texas. Uh, Andrew Body is a mobile quarterback, so he's able to, you know, elude those quarterback hurries. So I'm going to go with Texas Southern, and um, I'm going to say 28 to 24. Okay. And, and, and Andrew last Body, but not least. I believe in you, so don't let me down. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm picking Texas Southern to win out the West this year. Ah, oh, no, I don't got that one. What? You don't got that you got, one? You got Texas Southern winning the West? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Nah, I got, I got. No I got, way. I got Southern. Southern. They're not going to win it. You have Southern that has. Okay. Southern That's not interesting. They I actually have all calls. They've program in the last 10 years. Consistent. They I got Alcorn. I, I got I got Alcorn winning the West, and I got the I got the Soul Bowl being a a um. And we're gonna run it back in two weeks. 
Wow. I would love it. I would love it. I, I, you heard, heard it here first. Jackson State versus Alcorn in the SWAC championship at the vet. Jackson oh, State that. versus Texas Southern. <laughs> That's who I got coming out. <laughs> that would be, be lit. What all right? So what do y'all think the last but not least, what do y'all think the um, outcome to JSU FAMU is? I got a score already. I'm telling you right now. Um we're gonna put we're going we gonna you know how when you get in your car and um these these new vehicles have those uh those little buttons they got that little seat with the three little lights on it yeah we're going we're gonna turn the switch on and we're going we're gonna light the 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 seat warmer up for for coach Willie Simmons over in uh Tallahassee cuz this is going to be the third straight year that he's going to take the L to, to uh, Jackson State and uh we're going we're going to take over the OBC because I know they're not going to be playing in it in 24. And um, one thing about being on live is whatever we say is on wax. I got Jackson State by 17 points. I'm going to go 41 to 24. Ooh. I said it, and I stand on it. I know that Jackson State, I know that FAMU was picked to win the East. I don't know how they're going to, they got to get past us. I know that Southern was picked to win the West, but the next two teams, they got to go through Shaq Bully, or should I say Swag Bully. Yeah, we yeah. back, man. Wow, 24 points? I'm sorry. I'm going to give them 24. I don't even think that they're going to score two touchdowns. I'm telling you right now, that, that defense, it's solid. It's solid. And not only do we have that defense front, we our secondary is – amazing and some of the key players from the uh, orange blossom classic from last year are still on the team um yeah. k5 was the only touchdown that musa got last year and k5 is <laughs> is on the team um so and then uh, um some of our wide receivers from last year i just posted a video on my twitter um, the matchup was Rico Powers and Bowler. Bowler, yep. Rico. Cookton. Cookton. And um, some of the things that we're bringing to the table is um, the strength and conditioning has done Marvelous. wonders for our program. Uh, the coach um, Marvin Beef, the um, staff. And then just the um, versatility of the type of um, defensive formations that we're running. It, it's just amazing to see that evolution of um, our offense and our defense. But I think defensively, they're, they're not going to score more than two touchdowns against Jackson State. And then offensively, Jason Brown is going to air it out. Um, and, and he is going to pick and choose which wide receiver, which tight end, and which running back that he wants to give. You just don't know where he's coming from. You don't know if he's going to uh, give it to his running back and run because that's what he did all uh, – it was probably the first quarter. I was like, is this going to be a run offense? Then by the fourth quarter, you didn't know what was going on. You didn't know if he's going to go to the tight end. And so the test of this particular game will be – um, and I think that uh, my prediction is that FAMU is going to try to implement a run game. Um, mm -hmm. They will. Uh, well, we got to get on that 3-3 stack, though. That 3-3 three, three stack was, was late in the fourth quarter. At that point, the game was out of reach. And I felt like uh, Coach Bradley was um, looking at the Madden formations and was like, let's run this and hit, you know, the buttons on the PlayStation. Oh, no, because what I what I think that what what I think what happened was is we got a comfortable lead Jordan and Timona and that we we went into a situation where we knew they would be passing, so we just adjusted to what they had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina State was we we shut them out pretty much the entire game. So the what we did is we just basically yeah. So we shut them out the entire game. So it was like in order for you to try to win this game, you got to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna basically put our two. We're gonna put three slobber knockers up front, and we're gonna basically put. And I, we even had one time we had six DBs on the field. So it, I knew what he was doing. It wasn't – but we started off with a four-man front, you know, 4-2-5. Right. So I think that's our yeah, main we're going to be fine. Our main formation is, you know, 4-2-4-3. Four, four, but um, just to – even just to be able to see it on the field, it's interesting to see that type of switch up. Um, and then uh, to your point, Ken, you explained it. They didn't have no choice but to throw it. 
Um, yeah, and then we still had three men. We still had three defensive linemen that could get pressure on the quarterback. So right. I got now I got I got eight guys back here that's that's a safety net. So either you're gonna throw it to my guy, or you're gonna basically you know have to you know find a way. That's why when they brought in the running quarterback, he had a few holes because it, it was a different look. So. Uh, we went more into a, a prevent style, and uh, I love the ability to change because what you wouldn't have saw the last two seasons, you wouldn't have saw that. You just saw basically what you've seen the whole game, Listen. and we're going to live by it, die by it, and we're going to roll with it. We're going to run a press yeah. man, and we're not going to mix it up. We're not going to change the formations, not too much, uh, but and it worked. So I like that, Coach Bradley. Uh, we played a lot of bodies on defense versus South Carolina State, a lot. Yeah. So uh, that was impressive. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, and it didn't really. We we got depth too, man. We got depth like a mug. Like we we I'm mad depth. I, don't, a lot of depth. <laughs> I don't ever want to give them another touchdown, but I'm gonna say, um, seven to thirty-five. Okay. Damn, that's tough, boys. Drive a hard bargain. <laughs> I want to say. I'm gonna explain my score. Let me let me tell you why my no my score is. Simply because I feel like FAMU is going to come out and play us harder than they've ever played us, ever, because they know they got to win. This is a must win for FAMU. I don't want to hear any of these comments. I don't want to hear anyone trying to lighten the load for them. This is a must win. I feel like this is such a, it's such a must win that Jackson, Jackson State is playing with house money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. FAMU is the favorite. They got all them first team all swag, second team all swag players. I don't want right. to hear it. You guys got to win. If you don't win, you do, you're not gonna like us on the internet the next day. I'm just telling you, Monday's gonna be really bad for you. I'm Monday telling night. you, y'all better win. Monday night, Sunday night for sure. Oh, <laughs> Sunday night's gonna be crucial. It's gonna be crucial. Monday night. Matter of fact, halftime. I'm just saying. Be crucial. Shoot, <laughs> if we up by, if we up 24-0. I'm a, I'm gonna put my little. They put a meme out of me in FAMU attire. I've seen. <laughs> it. To get back out of me. <laughs> then they. Hey, look, they gonna come in and say, "Man, I tried to tell y'all. I told y'all that if we let us lose, if we lose, everybody's gonna be an expert. But boy, oh boy, just keep that same energy when we win. And the goalposts will be moved then to. They can't move that one. I done stuck some cement down in that dirt. It ain't gonna be able to move this one. <laughs> no sir, no ma'am. Not happening. Mm -mm. Yeah, but um, I I had a good conversation the other day because like this is the last year as of well, now that family is gonna be in the Orange Blossom Classic. So I was just like, I, as of now, I think we're gonna do it again next year. Uh, like what's yep. a good school that we play next time? You know, like who has a good alumni base? I was thinking like A and T, maybe Tennessee State, Tennessee. something. I'm, it's already been know. decided. Ooh. It's already been decided. Can with we, the inside we, scoop. Uh, I ain't saying it, but I'm telling you right now that it will be announced after the game on Sunday. Who we're playing? Is it? Is it? Is it gonna be? Is, is, is it, a good matchup? It's gonna be a good matchup. All right. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. I think it's a good matchup. I think it's a good matchup. Because I think like, so. you know, like somebody like him, you, I would, I would love a Howard fan base, but somebody that has like fans, like that has like they travel, like. I would even mind a, a JSU Southern. That would be lit. Like in Miami, I don't, I don't know. Ever, like, I don't uh, ever want to do that. Southern, Southern, Southern got to come to Jackson. Yeah. Southern got to come to Jackson next year. Um, yeah, we, but, and we need our, we need our yeah. Southern versus Jackson State. We need that home game right there. That's, that's one for I think, I, and I, I think a and schedule is kind of already uh, loaded from a non-conference standpoint. So, I don't know. I would love that too. I would love you it. Know, it's a couple teams yeah. out there that I would love. But when I when I heard the, the name of who it would be, I was like, I'm good with that. I think everybody would be okay with it. But we'll, they, the OVC put that out there. We call it the Blue Blossom Classic, by the way. We uh, we already got we got the shirts on. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother Merch Pack for, for doing Merch these. Pack. We rocking these we all weekend. To be a FAMU alum. He's a FAMU alum. Mm. He's a good sport, man. We rocking the Blue Blossom Classic T-shirts this weekend. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hope it's good because I just want I just want the camaraderie because like we always travel but everybody else doesn't like no shade to like like schools like Norfolk or stuff like I don't want that game it ain't gonna be fun <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna be fun don't hey I must say that South Carolina South Carolina State did pretty good in Atlanta this uh, past week I know we we uh we showed up um, it's kind of hard to 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 put us against.
to anybody. Uh, there's only a handful of bases, uh, FAMU, Southern, um, Alcorn, Grambling. There's a few schools that are, that'll travel a little bit, but um, hopefully so, man. It's in Miami, Florida. I mean, we'll see what happens, man. I think they'll make it down there. Whoever's going to be in that game, uh, I think they, I think their fans will show up. Okay. They're going to be excited. Um, it's it's an Orange Blossom Classic. It's an amazing, amazingly put together. Um, it's exciting to be in Miami and to be in that stadium. I'm so excited. Um, I did get a proof of press credentials for the Orange Blossom Classic. So I am ecstatic to be able to right. broaden my platform and take on that role of being able to ask those questions to the coaches and be in that press box with all of the data because I'm a data minded type of person. I love looking at data and using facts to make out whatever I want to. So this is going to be exciting um, for Jackson State and then Jackson State to come in 2024 and, and be the, the home team. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I agree. Me too. Uh, it's gonna be a great game. I'm gonna be at home watching it. But like, I think I think we're gonna be good though. Um, my last question is: Who do you think this season is the sleeper in the conference? Who do you think the sleeper is? Mona. Valley. I got Valley. Valley. Is, Valley's the sleeper, bro. I got the, That's an easy one. Oh, let me say this. Since Timona said Valley, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give everybody another. One. I'm gonna say Gramlin. Uh, I think Gramlin uh, Gramlin is not being talked about, but I think they will be better this year. I got Gramlin winning the Bayou Classic. Um, Gramlin could so, could challenge how for the West. Southern gonna win then. Four? <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna do them like that. Now. Four. <laughs> I just I'm sorry, man. I'm not. This is not hate. I do not believe that Southern is gonna gonna win the West this year. I do not believe it, man. I didn't I didn't see them I, and maybe that's because I'm ignorant of whatever they did. I'm and I but I, I keep up with recruiting. I don't feel like um what we saw. I think from from a from a Southern's alum uh statement, what he said was he was like, we did a lot of things to make us be better. It probably wasn't gonna pop off the you know, it wasn't gonna flash off your screen, but they did enough to make the team that they had better. Um I just don't think that – I think that it was lazy journalism. I think everybody felt like, okay, Southern played in the, in the championship game. Let's just pick Southern. Um, Jackson State took a dip. Fam, you was 9-2, and two, so prime's gone, and let's just bump them and elevate them up one. I think that's what happened. Because I, I – I, I, at the end of the day, with with Gentle Hunt, coalition hate. There's a little coalition. No, she is, man. Uh, was Gentle Hunt, uh, and maybe it's, you don't know this. He's a D lineman for FAMU. Was he a, uh, was he on the All Swag team? Somebody Probably give me not. I don't know. I don't remember seeing him there. Oh, you want? Oh, no, okay. I had a reason because I, I was somebody was asking. We had a conversation with one of the alums about Jeremiah Williams. I felt like Jackson State should have had more consideration from the preseason because we know the postseason is what matters but right. um but no i'm not hating on southern i just don't see it this is my football i i standpoint i'm i look at all corn and i say man all corn is going to be tough because the makeup and the things that they do well stayed in place um and i feel like they upgraded i feel like all i feel like gremlin upgraded they got probably the, the best pro prospect on their team sunny out of anderson you know what i mean that the and he picked up some weight. I think Miles Crowley transferring from Alabama State, who can spin it. Uh, I know he has. Yeah, absolutely. So I know Calvez was uh, the kid that was playing for him as a freshman. But I think I think that's Crowley's job. I think he's going to win that. So you got a quarterback that can spin it, a quarterback that can uh, do some things pretty well for them. So I think Gremlin's a sleeper because nobody's really speaking on him. And, the, and, and you can't really count out the G, man. You can't count them gentle out. Hunt, gentle Hunt is on the all swack second team defense. So this is my point and why I say that, and this is why I, I'm, I'm holding the lazy journalists and those that voted accountable. Gentle Hunt had 14 tackles. He had one sack, and he had one forced fumble. Jeremiah Williams had 18 tackles, and he had three sacks, and they both play the same position. And, Jer and Jeremiah Williams won the SWAC championship, and Gentle Hunt didn't. So I, that's when I say – 
there should have been more consideration for a player like a Devontae Davis or a player like a Jeremiah Williams for at least the second team. Right. That's That was the only point that we were making. So when we say that, people think we have our blue and white glasses on and we're not – we we just we're just calling out the biases, and the um, and those that hate on us, and that's why we that's why we we are who we are, and you are who you are. It's it's Jackson State versus the coalition. And that's why we <laughs> say they 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 don't know, they they really still don't know. They, they don't. Found, they they gonna find out, out though. Bit. They can ready to find out some more come Sunday. Oh so. yeah, and then. We only had one player for preseason first team. I'm like, we got. That's my point. Out. I'm just like one player. So what we say is, is we got a whole new team. We got 80 new players and and a new coach and a new everything. And uh, we we are exactly what you said, Jordan. We are. We feel disrespected, and we're on. We're hunting this year. I had a conversation with a player, and they didn't want to talk about South Carolina State. They had moved on already. They was like. Our focus is on this weekend. Wasn't no banter, wasn't no smack talk. It was like we locked in. We're going to find out what they do well. We're going to study the game plan, and we're going to be prepared. I said, yeah, these kids are different, man. I love it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. They make our job a whole lot easier. We get to come back and talk a little smack, but, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's um, all I have for you guys. Do you guys have any comments or anything that you would like to say before we close out? Um, well, I do have um, a matchup breakdown tomorrow on my YouTube. I will be doing uh, Jeremy Musa versus uh, Jason Brown. Right. Our secondary versus the wide receivers. Our defensive line versus a FAMU's offensive line. Um, so make sure that you go to She Loves the Podcast on YouTube. And that's tomorrow at 8 15 uh, Eastern. And thank you for, for having me on your show. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. And uh, good stuff, man. I want everyone, if you're not already, go to Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Turn your notification bell on. Also, I want you to go to KC-1400 Media on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. We will be going live tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific. So whatever side you're on, if you're in the Central, that's 9 Central. If you're on the East Coast, that's 10, that's 10 on the East, East Coast time. And uh, we, we're going to be talking some Jackson State versus FAMU. Uh, we've invited up some – some Jackson, I mean, some FAMU alums or, or supporters. They're more than welcome to join the show and talk about their ratless, their ratless. Uh, but uh, we're going to be on tonight. Like I said, we're on every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And Friday, we will be live from uh, the Hilton Aventura in Miami, Florida, uh, covering the game. Tiger Talk will be live on Sunday morning before the game. So at, just like Timona, we were blessed with uh, credentials to cover the game. And um, we're looking to try to get as much content as possible so be on the lookout to that. Jordan, we're proud of you, man. Thank you for reaching out to us. Continue to do uh, stellar work. And uh, thank you for having me, brother. Appreciate you. And thank y'all for coming last minute. I really saw y'all on Blitz City the other day. I was like, man, that, y'all, y'all had some good, some good, some good content. I, mean, I, 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 I heard the whole two hours of it. So I was just like, oh, yeah. I would, I would, I would love Shout to Kobe, love man. Yes. Yeah. I try to get She's a good on, sport, but definitely. But I um, thank y'all for coming and thank y'all for tuning in today on Historically Black Sense. Talk about me X Swag football and hopefully we can have you guys again. Thank you for having us. Anytime, bro. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a, thank you. have a blessed one. Bye. Take care, brother. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.